I lived in Beirut for many years. I actually saw this very close up. Fatah was hegemonic in Palestinian politics for decades. They played every kind of game you can think of. They knew how to win elections. And let me tell you something, folks. Winning elections is not some kind of platonic process. I, I lived in Chicago for 17 years. <laughs> and I can tell you things about democratic elections, uh, which would turn those of you whose hair is not white, white. Um, politics is an ugly business. Democratic politics can be an ugly business. And Fatah knew how to play that game and it knew, knew how to play all kinds of other games. It knew how to play the patronage game, the jobs for the boys game, the Chicago stuff, not things that are that hard to understand. Anybody who knows anything about politics knows what I'm, I'm talking about. Um, and th they did it in a manner that was almost effortless for a really long time, from the 60s through the 90s. In fact, they were still doing it, they're still doing it in some respects. But their, their ability to dominate Palestinian politics, their ability to, to achieve their ends has, has declined precipitously, and there are many reasons for that. Um, but it, it has to be said, over the last many years of Arafat's life and since his death, it's very, very clear that the capability of Fatah to deliver almost anything has diminished radically. Um, in negotiations with Israel, they proved their utter incompetence. They did a terrible job negotiating at Oslo. Uh, some of you have read Edward Said's critiques of Oslo. Some of you may have read some of my critiques of Oslo. There's a critique of Oslo in my book. Um, I could talk about it in questions if you want. The mistakes that were made there were horrifying. Um, they made terrible mistakes in terms of governance, of this miserable, emasculated, bastard authority, which is what the Palestinians emerged from the Oslo process with. There were, even under those very difficult circumstances, under that very low ceiling, there was an opportunity to do something which basically they failed to do. Uh, they failed to establish a rule of law. There was nobody preventing them from establishing a rule of law. It wasn't like the Israeli army came in and said, you can't have a rule of law. It wasn't like, you know, Dennis Ross would come in and wave his big finger. That was a Palestinian failure. That wasn't, you know, the United States forced us not to have a rule of law. That was a Palestinian failure. Uh, it's not like that somebody was coming in and telling them, you must take bribes, you must steal. Corruption was not a function of occupation. Corruption was not a function of the Americans dominating the negotiating process. That was a homegrown problem. That was an indigenous problem. And so Fatah, over the last many, many years of its dominance of Palestinian politics, basically has... Um, lost its ability to, 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 to operate effectively. This contrasted with what Hamas was doing. Hamas was effectively providing social services at a time when Fatah was basically rewarding its cadres, uh, uh, sending their kids to, uh, to university abroad, paying for their medical treatment, buying cars, uh, building villas, uh, 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 giving j jobs to people who were politically reliable, uh, and so forth. Uh, Hamas was providing social services for the poorest stratum of people. Uh, in an in a, in a, in a, in a equitable way and in an effective way. At the same time that Fatah was showing how corrupt they were, how uh, 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 vulnerable to the perks of power, uh, 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 Hamas was showing itself, it, uh, at least it appeared to be, incorruptible. And finally, at a time when, when Fatah was doing, doing a terrible job of negotiating with the Israelis, basically giving away the store, uh, Hamas took a very tough line. Now, when I say this, 